So good evening and welcome. So welcome to everyone online and here at the Buddhist Society on the first floor in the lecture room. So we're both online and we're here in person at the Buddhist Society. I'm going to start this evening just by lighting the candles and some incense. Is anyone allergic to incense? And if I could just ask if you could mentally check you've turned off your mobile phones or got them on airplane mode. Thank you. So good evening and welcome to the Buddhist Society. Uh, this is the basic meditation class and we'll be together for roughly an hour and a half till eight o'clock. And I want to start just for the first few minutes by inviting you all just whatever else you've been doing today, just to park it and just connect with your body on the cushion or the chair that you're sitting on. So wherever you are, just bring your attention to the points of contact with the floor and the cushion. So quite deliberately allow your attention to drop from your head and just get a feeling connection with the sense of the contact. So it's a very simple instruction, a very simple invitation but just notice what you do with it. And where does your mind go? So what I'm encouraging here is just to feel the contact or notice what your mind does when you're asked to do that. So what's being encouraged here is a direct experience, a sensation. And if you find yourself thinking about your feet on the floor, or your ankles and shins on the mat, or your sitting bones on the cushion, just notice that. There's nothing wrong with it, but just notice what you're doing. It's very warm here this evening. So just notice the temperature with the points of contact. How do your feet feel? Notice the pressure, the sense of the contact as well as the temperature.
So that's a good starting place for any meditation practice, is to allow your attention to drop and to feel the contact with the floor. And then the other invitation that always comes with a practice in sitting meditation is just to notice how you're holding your back, your spine in particular. So just see if you can have a reasonably upright posture. If you're sitting on a chair or on a settee, that's fine. But see if you can not lean too far into the back of the chair and support some of your body weight with your own muscles in your abdomen and your back. So you're not slouched and on the back of the chair is basically the, the, the point of that. If you're sitting unsupported on a cushion, it's much easier to uh, feel alert and awake. So just in general, just notice how you're holding your back your spine in particular. You don't need to be rigidly upright, but just reasonably straight. As much as your body will allow. And do remain comfortable. So we're going to be sitting in this posture for what, half an hour or so. So make sure it's a posture you can hold without getting into any difficult aches and pains. The Buddha's teachings on mindfulness and meditation are part of his path to lead us away from suffering, not to increase it. So just get a sense of comfort and ease as well as uprightness and alertness. And again, in the same way, just notice your back and your spine in the same way that we noticed our feet on the floor and our sitting bones on the cushion. Just to get an experience of the direct sensation of your back. What does it feel like? And again, on a warm evening like this, just a sensation of temperature is a good place to start. Hot, cold. Or just moderately warm. How is that part of your body, the back? And of course, one of the important points here is that there's no right or wrong about this. This is just the way things are. If it's a warm evening, you may feel warm. If we're in the middle of the winter, we may feel cool. How is it right now?
And then I invite you to move your attention to your neck and your shoulder area. And just feel that area in the same way. Just notice what tension you may be holding there. This is a place we often carry a lot of tension and stress. Just notice that. And whilst we're noticing tension and stress, the other invitation that goes with all of these practices is to relax. So you have an upright, stable sitting position. And within that, the invitation is to relax your body, relax your muscles. And if that's difficult for you, just think about softening So the energy is one of softness. So we're combining two qualities here, we're upright and we're alert, which is a quality potential we all have. And we're relaxed at ease at the same time, which is also a potential we all have. And here in this practice, we're quite deliberately, intentionally inviting ourselves to integrate these two qualities. And now I invite you to bring your attention to the whole of your head, the back of your neck, sides of your head, your face, the crown of your head. And just get a direct sensation of that part of your body. The temperature here in this room, in the warm afternoon. sense of uprightness at the top of your body. Notice the sensations in the back of your neck as you sit upright and unsupported. And again, Keep it relaxed, keep it gentle.
And then I invite you just to get a sense of the whole of your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Taking in your back, your sitting bones. If you haven't already done so, find a nice neutral position for your hands, resting on your thighs or in your lap. Just somewhere that feels comfortable and at ease, where you don't have to worry about what to do with them. But just get a general sense of the whole of your body. Sitting here on this warm evening, just as it is right now. So you can feel the sensation of the clothes on your skin surface and the air on your hands and your face. So just get a sense of the boundaries of your physical body. The touch of the floor and on the cushion. And then I invite you to bring your attention to your mouth, inside your mouth, and just taste whatever it is you can taste. You can feel the wetness of your saliva, the sensation of your tongue against the back of your teeth or on the roof of your mouth. And just notice what there is to taste, and it may be nothing. It may be some tea or coffee you drank earlier, or it may be nothing. So the invitation is just to taste whatever it is that's in your mouth. And just notice what your mind does with that. It's partly the sensation of touch, of your tongue in your mouth, the sense of wetness of your saliva, is also the sensation of taste. And if there's nothing to taste, just notice what you do with that.
And now I invite you to bring your attention to your nose, your nostrils. And just smell whatever it is to, there is in your room to smell. Here in the Buddhist society, we've lit some incense. So there's a faint smell of incense in the background. If you're further away in the lecture room, it may be nothing. And if you're at home, there may be some flowers or something, cooking smells in your room. What are you smelling right now? What comes to you on the in-breath? Maybe some perfume you're wearing. Or maybe nothing. What's the smell of nothing? And now I invite you to bring your attention to your eyes. And if you're sitting with closed eyelids, just notice the light coming through your eyelids. What are you seeing? What's the sense of light and darkness for you at the moment? Maybe the fading evening sunlight is casting light on your eyes. Maybe you're in shadow. What's coming to you right now through your eyelids? And if you have a half opened eye position, and you're looking at a blank floor or a wall, just notice what you're seeing now. So what is the visual sense you have right now? And here we have the opportunity to notice that some thoughts throw up images for us inside our minds. And we can notice those images and see them as just projections from our mind. So here we can discern the difference between light coming through our eyelids and images thrown from 
up from inside our minds. And now I invite you to bring your attention to your ears and just listen to the sounds going on around you, coming to you in the room you're in. And see if you can just allow the sounds to come to you, to reach you, without getting entangled in them. And if you do get entangled, just notice the thought forms that the sounds are producing inside you. Thank you. 
And now I invite you just to come back to your body and feel your feet on the floor or points of contact with the floor, your ankles and shins on the mat. So please feel free to stretch and move and adjust your posture. Take a sip of water. And well done. That was a sit for over half an hour. So whatever else you've been doing today, um, I hope it's had some impact on your system. Just to go over some of the things we did there. We did a body scan, mindfulness of the body. So we were dealing with the direct sensations of certain parts of the body. We worked through from the feet upwards. And then we looked at the senses, sense of taste, of smell, of sight, and of sound. So we're dealing with sensations of, of touch, taste, smell, sight, and sound. Now this is mindfulness of the senses. And it's a very useful way of starting in meditation. And any one of those sensations is a practice in its own right. You'll notice that we spent a little bit of time uh, with the sense of smell, the taste, the sight and sound, you could spend the whole practice just attending to those sensations, to those particular senses. And it's very instructive to notice what we do with our minds, so certainly when there's nothing very substantial to get hold of. And when we started, we worked with the sense of touch, and the sensation of your feet on the floor, or if you're sitting on a mat, your ankles and shins directly contacting the floor, is quite easy to get hold of. It's a direct sensation. But if then you're being asked to sense smell, and there's no particular smell in the room you're in, it's so interesting to notice what your mind does with that, or with taste. There's nothing to taste. Where does your mind go? And it's very interesting to notice how we, we need to, it's almost a, a, an urgency in some of us at some times to get hold of something, of something substantial to lock onto. And it's so interesting to notice what happens when we don't have that. And it's a good way of practicing. If you're in a room where there's absolutely no sound, and that's very rare if you're living in a city like London, where there's absolutely no sound. There's always something going on. If you're in a very, very quiet space, and just to see what, where your mind goes. And some people, um, they can't sit in meditation without having some background ambient noise. You'll find some of the meditation apps online now instead of having complete silence, they'll have a background ambient noise because many people just cannot deal with total silence. Well, that's interesting in itself. So any one of those senses you can work with uh, as just a, a way of locating where your mind is. What do I do with this? And the, the, the sensation of sight is particularly instructive when you have closed eyes because there is a certain amount of light that comes to you through closed eyelids or even if you're looking at a blank wall or a blank carpet. There's a certain sort of degree of sensation that's coming back from the wall or the carpet. And it's very interesting to notice how thought forms 
also produce images. And this is a practice where you can start to discern between what's coming from the outside and what's emanating from the inside. And this is a huge um, learning place in, in practice. What are we throwing up inside? What are we projecting? And you remember the first line of the Dhammapada. It's with our thoughts we create this world or words to that effect. So the Buddha was pointing to how we see the, the world through thought forms. You know the, the phrase looking at the world with rose-tinted spectacles. There's a certain truth in that. We all have a certain tint on the lens with which we view the world. It's interesting to start to sort of unpack that and to see it for what it is. So what, what, what's the lens we're looking on the world with? So these are practices in their own right. What I wanted to talk to you um, about this evening was a particular uh, energy or attitude that's useful in meditation practice. Now I know most of you here um, have been meditating for many years they're not beginners and I don't know um, everyone online um, but I guess it's a mixture of people that are quite new to meditation and people that have been practicing for years. Now uh, you'll know that in the uh, mindfulness teachings, the, the secular mindfulness practices that are so um, uh, widely available these days, they talk about beginner's mind, and in um, the Zen tradition, they talk a lot about beginner's mind. It's there in the Theravadan tradition, although it's not quite so explicit. It's there in the notion of right effort. And I want to bring that to your attention this evening as a particular place for all of us that we can attend to um, with, with some use. Um, if you've been at it for years, no problem. We can always go back to having a beginner's mind. If we're starting out, it's a very useful place to be. And what do we mean by beginner's mind? Well, if you look at a, a young child or a, a young kitten or a puppy exploring or experimenting with, say, let's take a kitten with a ball of wool, and you'll see it so tap the wool, sniff it, uh, just have a good look at it. Um, just be generally curious about it. Now, if uh, I'm, I'm putting certain conditions in place here, the child or the kitten or the puppy, whatever it is, it has to feel safe. It has to feel secure. So it's not under threat or danger, there's no fear. So we're talking about an attitude of curiosity here. It's just curious, what's going on here? What is this? And that's a really useful, important uh, quality, if you like, to bring to practice. Whether you've been at it for years or you're just beginning, just a sense of curiosity. And as I say, in the Zen tradition, it's there in this notion of beginner's mind. I think they call it Soshin. Um, in the Theravadan tradition, it's not quite as explicit, but it's implicit in right effort. Just being curious. What is this? So when we practice, uh, as we've been doing in that 34 minute sit we just did, and we're asked to sort of have a direct sensation, one of the bodily senses, our feet on the floor, for instance, just that notion of curiosity. How does it feel? And what goes along with this sense of curiosity is having no preconceptions. No preconceptions. Sometimes we come to meditation practice with a sense of, I should be 
doing this in order to feel like that. I should be doing this practice, proceeding in this way, so that I can get from there to there. I can have a particular mind state when I emerge from meditation practice. But one of the things about beginner's mind is we come in without a preconception how it's going to be or how it's going to turn out. So we don't know, and that's all right. We just be curious about it. How am I going to emerge from the end of this 30 minute sit? I don't know, and that's okay. I can be curious about it, and that's absolutely great. That's a great place to be. No preconceptions. So I'm pointing to here is this sense of curiosity. Just a sense of having no preconceptions. We don't know how it's going to turn out. When we're exploring a particular sense, and we bring our attention, say, to the sense of smell in the room, we don't know if we're going to still be picking up the incense that's been burning for over half an hour. It may have gone out behind, <coughs> now behind me, for all I know, and the, the, the sense of smell may have diminished. But we, if we have a preconception about it, like, I should be able to smell it, that constricts us. If we have an openness and a curiosity about it, then we can actually begin to be with what is there. So that's another quality that I'm bringing in here. All in this package of beginner's minds. Curiosity, no preconceptions, openness. Do you get the sense? So don't get attached to any one of these words. It's just the energy that's behind them. Sense of, oh, how is this? Can I be open to it? Can I be curious? And the preconceptions, if we, if we have them, we can notice those too. And that's okay. Many of us do many things in life with preconceptions about how it's going to turn out. And we can start to notice that and be open about it. That's all right too. So we don't have to beat ourselves up about having preconceptions. The other thing, I think the other quality that I would say is really useful in practice, and this is part of beginner's mind, if you go back to the kitten with a ball of wool, is this sense of exploration. Have you ever seen a kitten being presented with a new ball of wool? And, oh wow, what is this? Just, and this sense of sort of like just exploring, touching it, just seeing if it moves seeing if it's got life in it. Just that sense of like, just, just exploring, pushing the boundaries. What's here? What is this? Um, can I eat it? Can, I, can it play with me? Um, so it's that sort of sense of, sort of just playful exploration. Um, there's something quite sort of enchanting about watching a, a young creature be it a human creature, a child, a toddler, or a baby, or, or a kitten, or a puppy, just exploring when they feel safe and secure. And that's a good place to be in practice, just this sense of, what is this? So when you get a meditation sitting here solemnly telling you, uh, place your attention on the inside of your mouth and feel your saliva, and it sounds, it sounds terribly serious, but actually we can approach it with a sense of, just let's explore this. What is this? How does it feel? So there's a lot in that. What would I say, there's, there's one other quality that I would invite you to consider with, um, within the whole package of beginner's mind. And I guess it's just energy. So there's a sense of sort of, um, there's something quite enlivened about this, this exploring, curious, open state of mind. Um, it's, there's quite a liveliness about it. And that's something you can bring to practice too. So whether you've been at it for years, and many of us have, or whether you've come to this class for the first time, 
um, ever. There's this sense of energy that you can bring to it. Just, what's this all about? And it's quite sort of refreshing to actually go back to that sort of state. What is this? So when we do our next practice, which we're going to work a bit, little bit with the breath, I invite you just to see if you can bring some of these qualities into play. Now, if if you if you um, if you're not feeling very energetic this evening because it's warm and hot and um, you've been working hard today and you're tired, then that's okay too. So, with all of these practices, the other thing I would really recommend you bring whatever the practice, whatever the particular attitude you're bringing courage to move into is if you can bring some kindliness to yourself, some loving kindness to yourself into the practice. This is really important. I really feel it's sort of, I feel like it's the, the, the lubricant. It oils the wheels of practice. So whatever state of mind you find yourself in today, if you're not feeling terribly energetic, and beginner's mind, I think it's quite an energized state of mind. Just see if you can bring some kindness to yourself. It's okay. It really is okay to be tired, to be not very enthusiastic. That's all right too. Okay. So let's sit for a little bit longer again. And this time we're going to work with the breath. And I invite you now just to see if you can move into this sort of beginner's mind space. This is curious, open non-preconceptioned state of mind, an explorative state of mind. So coming back to your upright sitting position, just get a sense of your feet on the floor or your points of contact with your ankles and shins with the mat. Just reconnect a bit with your body. Feel the sensation. And I invite you to take the pressure off yourself. There's no particular state of mind you need to be aiming for. This is just an energy and a, a set of attitudes that are useful. And if you can't quite connect with them, that's okay. But just in this spirit of exploration and curiosity, I invite you just to notice the movement in your body caused by your breath. So without altering the breath in any way, I invite you just to notice the direct sensation of the movement caused by your breath. See if you can just keep open about where this is going. It 
See if you can have a sense of curiosity about the sensation. So just to remind you, the invitation is to notice the sensation of the movement caused by the breath. And to use this as your anchor, your point of return. So if you find yourself thinking, you haven't made a mistake, it's okay. But just notice that and see if you can just shift your attention back to that sensation.
So please feel free to move and adjust your posture. And again, well done. That was another, that was a 25 minute sit. So we've done almost an hour of meditation this evening so far. Just to say a few more words about beginner's mind and to place it in context of um, some of the Buddha's teachings. Many of you will be familiar with the four foundations of mindfulness, um, the Satipatthana Sutta, and um, without going into too much detail, the four foundations of mindfulness are mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feelings, mindfulness of the mind, and mindfulness of dharmas. And just, I mean, this isn't the place for an exposition of the whole of that sutta, um, but just to tell you, really, to look, help you locate where beginner's mind fits into this, this particular set of teachings. Now, if you take mindfulness of the body, that's what we were pretty much doing in the first practice. We were going through just sensing the direct experience of a body, different senses in the, that are in the body. Mindfulness of feelings isn't feelings as we perhaps uh, commonly understand that here in the West. What the mindfulness of feelings part of the four foundations is pointing to are three things. It's, is this pleasant, is this unpleasant, or is this neutral? So in the first practice, we were doing, we were going through the senses. Now, everything that comes to us from the outside world enters through the sense doors. Touch, taste, smell, sight, sound, and in the Buddhist, uh, scheme of things, the mind as well is a sense door. So everything comes to us from these senses. And the feeling part of the four foundations is what we immediately do with it is, and the, the place we mostly go to is this pleasant or is it unpleasant? And of course, that opens up a whole set of, uh, reactions within us. If it's pleasant, we want more of it, we want to keep it, we grasp after it. If it's unpleasant, we push it away, or we push it down, we deny it, we don't want to know about it. And if it's neutral, well, then it's interesting to watch what the mind does with that. Where do we go with that? Now, in the, we saw this quite clearly when we were exploring the senses in, in the body. Here in this room, let's just take the sense of smell, that sense door. The sense, the smell of the incense, it's generally quite pleasant. So we might want more of it. If we're sitting at the other end of the room and we can't smell it, we might just have a, a faint undertow of, can I get more of this? If it's an unpleasant smell, lots of them out there in London, um, we want to push them away. We don't want to know about them. But the interesting one is when it's neutral, when there's nothing much to get hold of. What do we do with it then? Where does the mind go? And you can see how, just with that one example, how on this very simple set of instructions, pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. Which of these is it? What do we do with that? And just that one example, that one sense door, you can see how your mind is actually moving, reacting to what's coming through the senses. The sense of sound is another very, another very interesting one here in London. Sounds we don't like, we tend to call them noise. It's very interesting how we use the, the words <laughs> so, so a bit of a giveaway. Oh, they're making a noise. We don't, uh, that's another, that's a uh, code for, I don't like that, I don't want it. 
It was a really pleasant sound, some beautiful music. We call it pleasant sound, or we want more of it. We don't call it a noise. And if there's no sound, if we're somewhere uh, calm, peaceful, countryside, and there's nothing going on, there's no, not even a breeze, and it's actually quite difficult to be, for many of us to be with, is no sound. Notice what the mind does with that. But that simple set of instructions is really quite interesting to work with. Just that. Notice what, where your mind goes when you get an input into one of the sense doors. Is it pleasant? Unpleasant? Is it neutral? What do you do with it? Now, of course, the beginner's mind is a really useful skill, if you like, to move into because instead of labeling everything with a preconception like that's noise, I don't want it, that's uh, unpleasant, I don't want it, that's pleasant, I want more of it, instead of preconceiving how we should be with any particular input to our senses, we can just be open to them. It's a noise that I don't like, and I can notice myself not liking it. That's okay. I can notice my mind being quite agitated or um, unsettled. And I can just notice that. It's, I can just be curious about it. And I can ex explore it. I can just watch the unsettledness without wanting to get rid of it, judging it, pushing it away. I can just notice it. So this beginner's mind starts to help us. It's a really useful place to um, explore, to help us with our openness, not having preconceptions. Yeah. So I'll leave it at that and just um, leave you with those th considerations to chew on, as they say. Um, just in these last few minutes, does anyone have any questions? If you're online and you want to put it into the chat, I will open up my chat box and see if anything's come through. Uh, okay, nothing come through as, as yet. Anyone here in the room want to ask me any questions? Or, I don't claim to have all the answers and I'll refer them, if I don't have the answers, <laughs> I'll refer them on to Colin or Ajahn Savado who take the, the class along with me uh, later in the month. Um, anyone got anything to ask or share? <laughs> When you said about the preconceived um, ideas of what we want to do, I realised that I have a lot of preconceived ideas disguised as intention. And so I want it to look like this, with this shape, with this, and have this happen. So I just wondered how to sort of keep those apart and to, to know that it's an intention that I've got and I'm not. Okay, I'll just I'll just relay that to the online um, uh, uh, attenders for this session. The question was, how can I distinguish between intentions and preconceived ideas? And that's a really great question. It's really it's um, I acknowledge it's a brilliant question. Uh, so very often we. We come to meditation, and we sit, and we have an intention. But if I could make the distinction between the intention with which we sit and the outcome that we want to get. So we can intend to sit down to practice. An intention is very much about how we orientate ourselves to this particular practice, at this moment in time. Outcome is something different. And the preconceived notion about 
the mind state, state we want to get to is about an outcome. So the intention to notice the mind state is the intention. And that's quite separate to actually wanting the mind state to be something different. So it's a really good question. And the, the distinction I'm making is between how you orientate yourself in practice. It's your, your, which way are you facing rather than where you're going to get to, if that's clear. So which way are you facing is really, this is my intention is to notice my mind state. The outcome, wanting an outcome is to want a particular mind state. And of course the teaching is, is just to notice the mind state. Um, I hope that's a clear distinction. And there's a lot more one could say about that. It's a great question. Um, perhaps when I'm next here, I will, I will come back to it. I um, appreciate the question. Uh, if I could just add anything to, to that. Um, I think one of the things about intention that is always worth saying is if you can come with a compassionate intention to yourself, almost everything else will fall into place. If your underlying orientation is compassion towards yourself, pretty much everything else uh, can be related to that and will fall into place. But compassion is the self-compassion is really the underlying um, foundation for practice, if I could encourage that. Great question. Okay, nothing else coming through on the chat. Any Anything else that, that anyone else would like to bring up? Okay. It's pretty much eight o'clock. Uh, I'm going to close just with the closing homage and just to thank you all very much for attending, everyone online and here in person at the Buddhist Society. I, we really appreciate your coming here and, and being with us for this online Sangha. I think it will be Colin next week. Uh, is that right, Lavinia? Um, I'm pretty sure it is. It's Colin next week. Oh, not hundred percent sure. Sorry. <laughs> it's likely to be Colin. Yes. <laughs> okay. So just the closing homage then. To the Lord, the Blessed One, who fully attained enlightenment, we render homage to the Buddha, the Blessed One. To the teachings so completely explained by him, we bow to the Dharma. To the Blessed One's disciples who have practiced well, we bow to the Sangha. So thank you all very much for attending this evening. Thank you. Wish you all well. Thank you all for attending online. Thank you, Lavinia.